Hello everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, and it's a time when we can relax and craft together and work on a project for about an hour, and we work on all the projects from beginning to end. And I am on location today at my mom's house, and my mom just popped on that she's watching, so she's actually uh, not home yet. They're on vacation, and they're, they're, on, they're driving right home, so somehow she's watching. That's funny. Uh, so I stole her stuff, and I'm going to uh, show you her progress on the Splendid Sampler 2. Uh, so that's the project that we're working on. Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. We're going to work more on the Tulip in Bloom block right here. And we got pretty dang far last night. We got the first bit of the tulip. So we just have uh, the last little leafy bit to do. So we're going to try and do that today. But I wanted to show you my mom's quilt so far, mostly because she's doing quilt as you go. And the more I think about it, I think we're gonna do the quilt as you go as well. And I really like how she's doing it. And I think I might just do it exactly how, how she's doing it. So I, I'll show you um, that right here. So this is her quilt as you go so far. So here's some of some of her blocks. I'm sure they look very familiar. Uh, and if you guys are following uh, in the Splendid Sampler in the um, in the uh, Penguin and Fish Crafters group, uh, she's been posting in there as well. But here, so she has been. I'll just show you here quick. But she has been sewing in groups of four. And then quilting them. So they're fully quilted. They have a back of the quilt. The batting is in there already. So she's doing that in groups of four. So here's the group of four. And then she did an additional group of four. Just as she's as she's finishing them, she's, she's sewing them in groups of four. And then adding just some normal fabric. So here's another group of four that, that's quilted. And then she did this fancy thing that happens in Quilt As You Go. It has basically this little binding border kind of sashing strip and it's on the back too. And this is that magic part that joins that joins the groupings together. So that's that's kind of the neat part and that's what I that's what I want to learn how to do and will uh, that's why I want to try quilt as you go. But some of the benefits of quilt as you go is first of all, she's only quilting tiny little pieces like this. She's not quilting a whole gigongous quilt all at once. So that is way easier. Uh, I think it kind of allows you to play around. It allows you to experiment a little bit more because you're not dragging a whole huge quilt done or quilt uh, around. Uh, instead, you're just doing these little pieces. And uh, secondly, by the time your quilt, by the time you're done piecing all your pieces, like here's another one of her blocks. Uh, by the time you're done with all your blocks, you got a whole quilt done, basically. <laughs> like she has, she has like a tenth of her quilt finished right here, right? So I mean, that's that's just kind of awesome. So I'm pretty excited about that because um, I'm just I'm getting kind of fatigued at making the tops and then having the whole back to do and then the whole whole uh, middle of the the uh, quilting of the quilt to do yet too. So this is kind of, you're kind of doing all the steps together. Kind of like how we did the block last night where we cut and then we sewed and then we cut the next piece that we needed and then we sewed that all up. We didn't do each step all at once and this is kind of like that. So uh, when I flip you around, I'll show you her quilt blocks a little bit more. But man, the more and more I think about it, I think we might do this as well. So as we finish blocks, you know, here are, here are four blocks. I think as, as we finish blocks, and I know we have four done already, we could sew those together and start quilting them and uh, just, just do this. And I know, yeah, a lot of you guys have asked about quilt as you go, and I've never done it, and it's been one of those mysteries that I want to learn. So I think, I, think, I think we might give that a try. So uh, I'm going to flip you around. We'll get going, and I'll show you a little bit more of her blocks. Yeah, it's, it's good for free motion practice, Catherine, exactly. So, okay, our setup's a little goofy tonight, so bear with me. Again, I'm on location in my mom's my mom's craft room. So, all right, let me flip you around here, see how it goes. Oop. There we go. So, 
Uh, all right, let's shimmy over here. <laughs> so we're going to be a little kind of oblong today, I think. I'm just going to keep keep moving here. Oop, wrong, wrong thing. Susan, you're excited to learn this. Surely you've done Quilt As You Go and you loved it. Oh, good. So that's great. So for some of us, it'll be new, like me. And then for some of us, uh, you guys can give us all the little tips, <laughs> tips along the way. So, okay, here is what my mom has done for the for the quilt as you go. So again, she's making just a block of four and she's completely quilting them. They're completely quilted. Here's the back. She's doing all white for the back. Uh, so those four pieces, uh, those four blocks with, with the back and then the batting on the inside, it's all pre-quilted. So she's she's done the quilting. Then she did an additional one. Here's another four blocks. Uh, so the four there, you know, backing and the batting. And then she did that little connector piece. So that's that's this right here. And I think that's done by having like a one inch piece and then a one and a half inch piece. Um, and we won't get into the detail now, but we'll, we'll uh, get going on that. Oh yeah, so she's she's been practicing her quilting since the since the um, charming chevrons uh, quilt, and we did all that quilting. So she's she's playing around with more fancy quilting and stuff too. Like look at her flower here; that just it's so pretty. All right, and then here are some other blocks that uh, she needs to have four done before making it into uh, her square. But look, isn't that pretty? I love how that turned out. I love just the black there. Uh, oh, we got this one. <laughs> Cute birds all over. And and this guy there. She she fussy cut the little little birdie in there. So she's doing all black and white. I mean, if it's not obvious, she's doing a black and white quilt. Uh, and then she's every once in a while adding a little bit of the blue and the green because there is just a little bit of blue and green in in these uh these um, colors here. So that's her quilt. Uh, but yeah, so I think when we get back, when I get back in town, um, I'm not going to be on on Monday since it's a holiday. So uh, after today, I'll be back on Tuesday. I think maybe we'll start figuring out this quilt as you go. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. So all right, let's shimmy those to the side. Okay, and we are doing this guy a little bit more. So let's see. I did not bring any of my own things, any of my own tools, because I'm hoping that I can figure it all out with mom's things here. So first of all, I would like a pencil. Um, a pencil. A pen will do. Here we go. All right, we, we finished page one. Oh, you recognize the penguin and fish fabric, Christina? That's awesome. Yep, she's using she's using all my, my penguin and fish fabric for her quilt, which is always so sweet. Okay, ooh, we finished five. So we are on six. Draw a diagonal line uh, on the wrong side of a J square. Okay, we need a J square. We haven't done that one yet, so that's... Uh, two and a half inches by two and a half inches. What else do we need for number six? Uh, if you remember, we I did not I did not pre-cut anything on this one. I thought I would just get too confused too quickly. So I'm I'm like going step one and only cutting what I need for step one. So we do have cutting to do yet. Um, all right, I need okay on the J square, referring to the triangle squares place. Okay, a J square with an E square. Okay, so I need a J square and an E square. So J square is white. So we'll have to press. My mom got one of those uh, felt pressing mats as well. She got the bigger one. Um, I can show you guys. She, <laughs> she lets me find all the good gadgets and then she gets some. So she has the, uh, the bigger pressing mat. So there we go. Hers is a bit longer than mine. And then she has the same cordless Panasonic iron. So hers is, I think, this has got to be a, a good 24 inches by maybe 18 inches or so. So we're going to uh, press some more white fabric. We need that 
two and a half inch square. This looks like a good kind of chunk to get it out of. Actually, maybe right here. This looks like it. This looks like it'd be a good square for us. So let's get that, and then, whoop, then let's see our. What was the other letter? Oh, the E. So E was the light green solid square. Dark green print rectangles, that's this. So the light green solid square, I would call it that. And remember we changed it last night. So now we're using the big circle fabric for that. So I'm gonna put aside my swirl fabric. Okay, so let's, let's cut out, I'm assuming it's a two and a half inch square. Yeah, you gotta mark which, what number we're on. <laughs> I get confused really quickly. So two and a half, two and a half, makes perfect sense. Okay, so let's give both of these a little press. Oh, Robin, this is the size that you have. Yeah, the big size is nice. I would have liked the big size, but the space that I work in, um, you know, I, I'm just at my little kitchen table. Uh, that space, it just, the smaller size of the wool mat just worked, worked just right. Okay, and let's, I don't think we've used this yet. Oh, I, I think I have two fat quarters of this. I brought the, a fat quarter that hasn't, doesn't have any cuts in yet. So let's, we'll go at the lower corner here. It's so nice that this is cordless. I can just bring it around everywhere. I don't have that cord. Okay, let's do, Let's give this a try. Working in a pretty small space here too. <laughs> so we'll see, see how it goes. So I'm just lining, I wanna cut both at the same time. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit. Oh yeah, I don't see why you couldn't do hand sewing for quilt as you go or hand quilting for sure. I don't see why not at all. Um, yeah. And once we get going on it, you'll, you'll, um, yeah, all you do is quilt, whatever it is, you have a chunk of, and you don't have to do squares either. You can do long rows, uh, and then put them together later. The trick is you have a chunk that you've put together and quilted, and then you put those little interesting sashing strips. That's the magic trick is these little sashing sashing strips. Oh, yes it is. <laughs> Look, isn't that sweet? It's a little old uh, a teacup with uh, with pin cushions. With pins in it. All right, I need a ruler. Let's grab this one. Okay, so two and a half inches. Yep, I double checked. So she has a large rotating cutting mat, but unfortunately with my setup here, I don't have quite enough space for that. And her um, her rotary cutter is one of these curved grip ones um, that you you pull up this dial, and then I, then you have to put the lock. Like this is the safety, safety's on. That's how hers works. I'm just so used to the straight ones that I don't know this curved one feels goofy to me. Okay, I'd like to try and cut this without rotating it, but I might have to contort my body a little bit. Let's see if I can do it. So two, one, two and a half, one, two and a half. I can kind of hear crickets outside. I don't, I don't know if you guys can hear them, but no, I don't hear any frogs today. It's always kind of fun to hear frogs when we're here. All right, that, this is gonna be the hard one. Ooh, wow, yeah, okay. We're gonna go this direction. I think we did good enough there. Not used to this uh, rotary cutter. Okay, there we go. Um, all right.
right. I think we are done with this fabric. Don't need that anymore. Okay, directions. We got the pieces. Oh, I, Gretchen, I did not stop for a caramel apple yet. I just, I drove in. We drove in and I came on here right away. So I've done, I, I went to the bathroom and then set up. <laughs> That's what I've done here so far. <laughs> uh, after sitting in the car for, for five hours. So we made it just in time uh, to sew, which is great. This is a great way to end the evening. Okay, two pieces. Draw a diagonal line on the wrong side of the J square. The J square was the white one. I'm a little wary of using that pen and I've also already lost the pen. So let's, uh, here we go. This looks, this looks, oh, that's just an eraser. I'm like, this looks like a pencil. It's just an eraser. All right, well, we're using a pen. So the J one is this. So this is my white. It doesn't have a right or wrong side. No, Mary Jane, it was perfect, perfect weather. If anything, it was just a little traffic-y uh, because of the holiday, I think. Everyone's heading out of Dodge. And we, we usually leave in the morning. So um, this time of day, there is just more people as well. All right, there we go. Pen line. Okay. Place the J square on the E square with right sides together. So cut and press to make two half square triangle units. Okay, so why do we need two? Oh, discard or set the other one. Okay, fine. We're making two half square triangles like how we normally do. So right sides together. We're gonna sew on this side of a quarter inch and then we're gonna sew on this side of the line uh, for a quarter inch. Just press the diagonal. Yeah, Jenna, that's what I'm thinking. We could just, you know, I get what they're saying. We'd have one extra little half square triangle hanging around. So yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Might as well. We actually only need one half square triangle. So we could just sew on this diagonal and cut off the excess and be done because we're trimming it. We're trimming it down anyway. But in her way of doing it, we do it normal. We sew on both sides and then we have an extra half square triangle to hang out with um, for some at some other time. Oh, Lydia, you got your fleece. Yay. That makes me happy. Always happy when um, things get uh, in the mail. I know, dangerous cutters and pens. All right, guys, I am going to shimmy sham you around uh, to sew here really quick. So bear with me here. Okay, let's see. All right, well, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna turn you guys, I think I'm gonna turn you guys this way. There, I'm gonna put you back on me and we'll just go down here. I think you'll be able to see the sewing machine a little bit. So we'll just keep on moving. All right, so I think my mom has a little couple liters down here. So this is, this is her machine. It is a Bernina Virtuosa 153. And it, it's getting, it's getting pretty old now too. I mean, now they make all these Berninas with this whole side thing that has, um, has all sorts of like dials and, and uh, computer screen stuff. All right, I'm just realizing that I don't have the, the scant quarter inch marked. So I'm guessing my mom has the um, quarter inch foot on. So I'm just gonna use her quarter inch foot as my go-to for my scant quarter inch. We're just gonna trust her foot here. Might get a little goofy, but I think we'll be fine ultimately. All right, let's find a tiny scissors. All right. Mom's got the little uh, scissors, little stork scissors. It 
and so since we're working in this view right now, like the view where I usually have flipped on me, the sewing machine's reversed, so it, that's why it looks a little goofy tonight. Trying to get it work. Yep, the picture is backwards. Okay, so let's, we'll trim and cut this. So I'm gonna flip you guys around again. There we go. <laughs> All right, actually, there's more of the room. <laughs> you guys, my cord is too short and it's stuck. So there we go. Back down here. Step seven and R eight are tricky. Okay, Sharla, I will look out for those. Okay. Let's press this little guy quick. Oh, you know what? I didn't need to press that quite yet. We can trim it first. So I'm cutting right down that diagonal. Okay, now we have our two half square triangles. All right, and we're gonna press towards the pattern side too, it looks like. So I'm gonna put the pattern side up. So we'll fold it one way. And there we are. It's subtle, my, my um, colors are pretty subtle. Yeah, you're getting vertigo, I'm sorry, Grace. I think, I think we'll get it figured out here. It's so funny because I haven't been here um, sewing a splendid sampler project in ages and since then I have a different tripod so it's, I'm just trying to figure out how did we used to have that set up? So still figuring out on location a little bit more. All right, so one of these we can put aside, we don't need it. Uh, we only need one for this project, so here we go. Uh, no, she's not sewing with me tonight. I think they're they're actually not here yet. They're on their way back from visiting my brother and his wife. Okay, we need to trim this to one and three quarters square. So I'm gonna, I have another one of these little guys. I'm gonna put that diagonal on the diagonal seam here and we'll trim that. We're gonna, we're gonna just stand tonight. Again, they gave us a generous amount of leeway here. This is a, a good two inch square and we only need it to be um, one and three quarter inch. So this, this pattern is nice for beginners. It gives you a little leeway. Although they gave us so much leeway on those other half square triangles that I thought we were maybe doing something wrong, but, but we weren't. Okay, so one and three um, quarters. You have my curiosity. What is the remembering string for? Oh, <laughs> I forgot I wore this. So this is a, it's a little ring. I was just going through my, my rings. I'm, I'm wearing lots of rings. But uh, my husband gave me that on uh, our 10th, our 10 year anniversary. So that's our like tying the knot. <laughs> that's, that's what it is in my head. It's like, it's the knot for tying, tying the knot. That was our 10, 10 year anniversary. All right, I need this to be one and three quarter. I gotta tell you all these lines are freaking me out. So one and three quarters. I, know, I, I love it. The only problem, I don't wear it all the time. Well, first of all, it's a little big. All rings are a little, a little big for me. I have tiny fingers um, and, okay, wait, one and three quarters. Yep. And they're always too big. So that's, that's problem one. And it just snags on everything, <laughs> especially this particular sweater that I'm wearing, this, this like, um, knit sweater. I always just keep snagging it, but I think it's so cute and I like it and it's our 10 year anniversary ring and that makes me happy and 
Um, and then this this ring here uh, I got when we were in New York. So that's our 15 year one. I think this one was just for my birthday, but still. Uh, so I got the wedding, the, the 10 year and the 15 year. And so I thought, you know, I saw it in the, I saw it today. I'm like, I'm going to wear that. But yeah, it's, it catches on everything. Okay. Um, there we go. That's it. We're done with that step. I'll mark that off. And that was the, that was J and E. You might notice, I, and we talked about this a little yesterday, but I am marking off things a whole lot more than I usually am. And that's because every piece is a different size and a different color. So it's, it's just a lot to keep track of. So I'm just being extra sure that I'm not, that I'm cutting the right thing because I'm crossing everything off. So right now we only have D and H left, left to do. So, okay, where are we at? We're on seven. So seven is what um, you guys, a lot of you said that you were having some issues with with yesterday. We talked about it a little bit yesterday, but now we'll we'll do it in the wild here. You have to make sure that the pieces are lined up like the picture before you mar mark the dot. Okay, that's good to know. All right, so on the wrong side of one H rectangle. Okay, that was a thing. Okay, we need the H and D. So we need the rest of our pieces at this point. So let's let's cut those. Remember, we have not cut anything. Um, okay, so H, oh, we need two rectangles. So two, one and three quarter by three quarter. And okay, so this is the same. So we need two of them though. So let's, uh, so that's like a six inch. It's like we need a seven and a half inch. So we need, if I cut, if I layer these two pieces and cut a seven and a half inch strip, um, that's that's one and three quarters inch wide. I should be able to cross cut it in half and we'll have our two because we need two of each. So two of the dark green print and then two of the white. So the dark green print is going to be the swirl. And um, then we, we got our crazy white strip again. So I wonder, do we think, do you think this is seven and a half inches? So I think it looks maybe a little shy. Yeah, that ain't wide enough. Dang. Okay. So let's find a different area to snip a chunk off of here. We could just clean this up and do one just long strip. It's kind of sad to do that, but you know, why not? Let's, let's just clean this up. Let's, let's do it this way. This is going to be plenty long, but who cares? So we're wasting a tiny tissue of fabric. So let's, let's press this quick. We'll use that white later. I'll save it up. I'm sure some little foundation paper piece or some English paper piecing. I'm sure we'll use it for that. Okay, so let's lay this here. It's actually not my rulers too my cutting mat's too small for it which means I'm going to just fold it in half. All right, so when you fold it in half like this, I'm going to just put the um, the fold on a line down here. And you know what? Normally I would layer both pieces, um, my both my fabrics together, but since we're dealing with such a um, kind of like a weird, awkward space for me here, I'm going to just I'm going to just cut this. Let's look at my line there matched up. We're going to trim a bunch off of here. We'll just cut the pieces separate. All right, so I'm going to trim. Oops, sorry, I hit you guys a little bit there. All right, we're fine. Okay, and then, so here's my scrap. I'm going to keep that for later. And how big were these? One and three quarter. So I think I'm going to measure this way because I don't want to move this. I don't want to shimmy it around. So we'll go one and three quarter here. We'll do the double ruler method. Three quarter. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to put this down. 
this wool mat's a little bit in my way, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, great. And then I need to trim these down to the three and one quarter. So many quarters and they're all different. So, all right. We'll go this way. Trim my nice edge so I have a good edge there. Right now it's um, looking pretty raw. Okay, and now we'll do our three quarter. I suppose I could have done the double ruler there to not flip it around, but I think we'll be okay. Okay, wait, three and one. Yep, three and one quarter. So one, two, three, and one quarter. Ooh, these are kind of small pieces. These are smaller than I thought they were gonna be. Let's count again. One, two, three, and a quarter. Okay, that's the size. So I have quite a big piece left over, which is fine. Again, I will use that as a scrap. So, all right, we have to do this for that other piece of fabric as well. So we got our two rectangles here. So we should have matching ones of those, but in that swirl fabric. And here, I don't think I've, oh, I did use a little bit of it. So again, I think I'm gonna do the same thing just cause it's easy. I'll fold it and cut on the fold. Uh, let's, let's give it a little press though first, just to make it happy. So I'm, I'm glad we made that switch. Remember we switched, um, we were going to do that circles for, for the, um, leaves, but then we switched it to these swirls and I think these swirls are just going to be fun and happy and pretty. Okay. Let's get that fold on, on an edge. Oops, man, I'm making it crazy here. Or I want the fold on one of the lines here is, is what I mean. Because then when it's unfolded, then it'll be um, equal. Okay, ruler one. Oh, I think my parents might be coming home right now. I think I heard the car. All right, so let's trim that. Get a good edge going. All right, we'll do the double ruler, but I think I'll use this one. And we need to go that, oh wait, that one doesn't, that doesn't fit in this small space. So we'll do one and a quarter here. Nope, one and three quarters. We got some time left. I'm really hoping we can finish this block this block tonight because that would be amazing. That would be another block done. And this, the, that means this could be another block that we, um, this could be one of the blocks that we put into our quilt as you go. So I'm, I'm super excited. I want to do the quilt as you go when we get back. And I think it's a good, I mean, we just finished the charming chevrons quilt, which was all about learning how to quilt for me. So, I mean, it would be such a bummer to have such a long time in between working on a quilt that that I like lose all my practice of free motion quilting. So to do this quilt as you go, that would be a way to keep practicing. Zoop, there we go. All right. Oh, have a great night, Marie. And here, <laughs> I think they're trying to come in quietly, which is funny because they know I'm doing this now. Uh, all right, so three, three and a quarter inches is right about here. One, two, three and a quarter. Snip. All right, and then this piece we'll save for later again. All right, we should be done with the cutting and the pressing. Well, not the pressing. We'll have to press these after we sew them. But in general, we should be ready for the next step here. Okay. We're done cutting, that's for sure. That's nice. 
All right, on the wrong side, we're, we're, we're gonna have to play this out, I think, as I read it. Because this is the part that was a little difficult, right? So this goes this way. I'm using the picture for sure. And <laughs> Deborah, I'm not sure we'll do that. <laughs> I think she likes, I think she likes staying behind the scenes. I think her hands were on once. <laughs> All right, so on the wrong side of one of the H rectangle, that's this, measure three quarters from one of the lower corners and mark a dot. So in theory, I'm gonna mark a dot right there. Um, place the H rectangle on a D rectangle, right sides together using the stitch and flip method so trim and press the leaf unit should measure. Okay, so I think, you know, I don't really know why we have to do a, a dot. I think we can just, oh, you guys are nice. I think I can just lay this on top. And it's, I mean, these are, you know, instead of drawing a dot, I can just, I can just see through the fabric, right? So I can just draw a line from here to here. I don't, and then sew right on top of the line, right? That's all I really need to do, I think. Um, let me look here quick. Okay, good. My mom has a, a water erasable marking pen. I'm just gonna do that. So I'm gonna draw a line directly. You know, I can see through my, my fabric. If you can't see through your fabric, um, just take, do what they say here. Take, um, measure one and three quarters inch up. Oh, wait, that's a different, oh, this is a, let's get a more precise ruler. There. Yeah. One and three quarters inch. That's just, that's just the width of this. So if you don't, if you don't have a, um, if you can't see through your fabric, just take a ruler measure one and three quarters from from this bottom area and then just give it a just give it a little mark there and really i think what you're ultimately doing is you're connecting the dots so you're going to connect you're going to connect that dot right there which is the width of this piece to to where they connect down here and that's the line that we're going to sew on so right like that. So I'm going to sew directly on that line. And you know what? Let's do the other one right away as well. Oh, we do the other one the other way. So, okay. So this one goes this way. So I'm going to go on to step eight as well. So step eight, look at the pictures for sure. So step eight goes the opposite direction. Yeah, you could, you could probably fold fold this and make a crease here and that would do the job for you. I'm just gonna, I, I think I'm gonna just mark this one though too. Just cause I can see through it pretty well. Use this little, little guy here. And you know what, if I'm just sewing by myself and, and don't care about well, not sewing by myself, but if I, if I'm sewing like a bigger block and I don't care if it's perfect, I'll just eyeball. I'll just start the sewing machine right there and keep going, um, to the end and just aim for that spot. Okay. So this is it. Let's get sewing again. Um, we're going to go to that weird, <laughs> we're going to, I'm going to flip you guys around. We're going to do the vertigo thing again. So bear with me again while I do that. Okay, here we go. Turn you guys around. Yeah. <laughs> so there we are, back at the machine. It's gonna be a little goofy. There, hopefully it's not too crazy. <laughs> Don't mind all the stuff over there. I set all I set all the stuff on the floor before I started. So we'll We'll give this a try. So this time I am sewing exactly on that line. I kind of drew it a little funny, so I'm gonna go right to the left of it, I think. But it's not like what we were doing before where we're sewing on either side of the line. We're sewing right on the line this time. 
All right, let's keep those matched up. Okay, that's the one. Here is the other feller. It's fun sewing on this machine because this machine is so much newer. I mean, it's kind of an older machine now, but it's so much newer than than mine. So it's just so smooth sounding. And the feed dogs just work well. Yep, Nadia it is, or, or, or Nida. Let me know if I'm pronouncing your name right. I think I might be doing it wrong. Um, it's, oh, I think I just sewed those two together. It's backwards because the Facebook, I've I've flipped you guys funny. So all right, let's let's flip back now because this this way's weird, right? So we're done sewing. Yeah, <laughs> back over here. Actually, why don't we just stay right? Well, nah, I'll get you guys down here again. Okay, so we got those guys sewn. So now we are going to trim them, um, but first I'm going to do that method where I press it first because then I can use this edge as a guide to help like kind of manipulate this just to make it sure it's straight and then I will snip off that extra. So all right, let's give that a press and actually let's, um, I think it's probably Oh, they're having us press towards the white color. So that's that's a little different um, than I was expecting. So I'm putting the white on top and then pressing. That looks nice and straight, I think. So some of that, uh, that blue um, water soluble ink, some of that might come through a little bit here, but ultimately once we give this a wash, it will it will go away. Okay, so there is our second piece. And I'm gonna just trim. And I'm not seeing a big scissors here. So I'm just gonna cut with this guy. <laughs> That'll work. I could use the rotary cutter too. But I just like cutting these with with um, whatever scissors I have. All right, there we are. So next up, I think we are on our final assembly, our final sewing here. So this guy, let's see, goes here, it looks like. Then, then like this. And then down here. Okay. So first we sew these two and then these two and then we press and then sew them both together. But this is interesting. So this does not look the same size, does it? So did we measure something wrong here? Cause look here, we should, this, this should be the same size as this right now. And it does not look that way. Oh, the leaf unit should measure Using the stitch and flip method, sew, trim, and press, the leaf unit should measure one and three quarters by five and a quarter. Okay, so that is not what happened here. One, two, three, four. So ours are really short. So this is this same thing happened to you guys too, Gretchen, you're saying. Yeah, so this is not the right size. So this should be one and a quarter by five. Oh, you know what we did wrong? Okay, so I got the answer and it means we're gonna have to do it again, which probably means we're not gonna do it tonight. So here's the problem. Um, the method that they were using, I was thinking that they were sewing directly on the line, but it looks like they are, Well, that's so odd though. It looks, the only way this would have worked, well, no, if they sewed below the line, then it would have been off 
too a little bit. Look at the bits. This is the other one. So for this one, yeah, so here. So I'm wondering if this is the line drawn. Well, no, that's still the sewn line. All right, do you guys know what's happening here? Oh, one bit measure is a bit longer, but why is that? Because, because they were both the same size. Okay, let's read it again. So on the wrong side of the H piece, that's this one, measure one and three quarters from the lower left corner and mark as a dot. So that's this dot here. Oh, did I do the cutting instructions wrong? Oh, you're right. I did the cutting instructions wrong, you guys. So we did it right. We did it right, but my cutting instructions were wrong. So I did it. Oh, wait, two and we did um, one and three quarters. Oh, no, one and three quarters. Their measurements are wrong, you would say. Mistake in the pattern. You need to include measure of the corner square. Yeah, the corner square is right here. But when I do that, like these two, these two things, these two guys should be equal. And these, this should be equal here and it's, and it's not. So yeah, the length is wrong. I think, I think you're right. So what do you mean about the cutting though? The cutting being wrong because you still have to sew along the line here. Like you still have to draw that dot. So let's, let's just go through this around. Let's go through this again, I mean. Okay, on the wrong side of the H rectangle, measure one and three quarters from the lower left corner. So if it's placed like this, that would mean the lower left-hand corner is here, right? Place, so that's this dot here. Place the H rectangle on the D rectangle, right side together using the stitch and flip method. So trim and press. Look at the length of your petals. Yeah, so this does appear longer, but I don't know why based on the instructions. So what is the size of the cut H? So, wait, we're doing H and D. So H is one and three quarter, or is, oh, you guys, it is different. You're right, it is different. So H, H is three and one quarter, and a D is three and three quarters. There we did. That's, that's the problem right there. Three and three quarters. So that's the problem. They are two different sizes. I got it now, Gretchen. <laughs> I looked at that eight times and okay, so that's what's wrong here. So we just, we made that uh, piece too short. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can figure out a solution. Should we just, should we just cut a little piece and add to it? Let's see, we need to cut. How much would we need? We would need another, we need to another, add another half inch, which means we need to have an inch. Let's just do that. Let's cut. You tried and, and tried and the same thing happened. Okay, so problem is I just totally did not read the instructions right. So you know what? We got, we got that extra piece here. I'm gonna just totally trim a, a, a one inch because if we need to add a half inch, because I was a half an inch short, I'm gonna add. Um, I'm gonna add an inch because we'll get rid of. We'll get rid of a half inch from the seam allowance, and, and that will leave us with an inch. There we go. I could add it to the white, but technically we shortened this length. So, and because it's all swirly, we probably won't know. Maybe we can even match it up. <laughs> there will be something like, something like that. All right. So here's what we're going to do. 
I'm gonna sew these two pieces together and then I'm gonna sew this piece together and sew it to here right away. Except for this goes this way. And then we'll press and then we'll go ahead and finish this. Okay, so that's the deal, you guys. That's what I did wrong. So if you were having trouble with this too, uh, the white piece here was a different length than this piece and I thought they were the same length. And that is not what, ha that's not the case. This piece is actually a half of an inch uh, longer than, than this piece. And that's why we're in the predicament now. So I'm gonna add back in that half of an inch uh, right now. <laughs> so that is the only, that's the only thing we did wrong. We did the whole measuring and piecing and trimming and, and ironing. We did that all perfect. That is okay. That does not change. Um, we just cut it wrong. So we're gonna add to it right now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna vertigo you guys again. We're gonna turn the other direction. Hello. So down to the machine. So we will be crooked again. Or we, we'll, we'll be flipped here again for a little moment, but that will be short. Let's see what's the best. I think we'll do it this way. So right sides together. And again, you guys, I'm not exactly positive on my mom's quarter inch seam allowance either because uh, I don't have it marked. Okay, so now let's get all these pieces together. Oh, I think I should have done this first because then I could have just continually chained, but oh well. Okay. Chunk number one. You know what I might do? I might do something horrible and not even, not even um, press this. I think I might just finger press this just for the sake of not having to move the machine. So I'm gonna just finger press this piece. Finger, finger press it to one side like that. So here, I'm, I'm a little flipped here too. So uh, there we go. So I just, I pressed this with my fingers and now I'm gonna go ahead and add it to the bottom piece here. So I'm gonna flip that around. And we'll sew this guy down. Hey Nancy, I'm skipping the pressing part. <laughs> I will press these though before I sew the two units together. Oh, maybe I won't. Maybe we'll we'll just be daring. We won't press anything anymore. All right. Let's go to here. I think I am. We're just gonna press this when I'm done. All right. So now I'm gonna add that square. So I'm gonna I'm gonna finger press this again. This is that other side. Oh, you keep a pasta roller. Yeah, I've seen like those other little rollers. I kind of want one of those because I love, I like finger pressing. Then you, you don't have to go to the iron all the time. All right, this goes on like so. Flip that around. I'm glad we figured that out, you guys, what, what we did wrong there. That was bothering me. Just, I mean, you know, it's always a bummer when you don't know what's wrong, but, um, you know, it's just when you think you did it right and then there's, there's a little, um, it's still wrong, then, then that's a bummer. Uh, Gretchen, the pasta roller, um, or it's just like a little wooden roller that you can roll on the seams to finger press them and that makes them nice and flat too without without ironing them. So you could just um you could just flip this, lay it on a flat surface and do the the roller. And um that's that's uh, a thing too. So that's another little uh fun tool. I don't have one of those. 
So we're just gonna lay it here. I'm just gonna finger press it. Just because I don't want to flip flip the camera around again. I know you're trying to talk me. Oh, talk, talk, uh, talk it through for me, Gretchen. I just didn't quite understand. All right, so this seam, I'm gonna go this way, so we can lock these seams together. Okay, and again, I'm skipping, skipping the iron. It's a little short, but I think we'll be fine. Yep, let's do it. Lock these seams together. All right, that's that seam. Yeah, this piece is gonna be a bit small, but I'm gonna stretch it a little bit. I think I'm making my um, scant quarter inch a bit big on on my mom's machine, but we'll see. Let's give a give it a press and see what we see what we got going on here. I think we did it, you guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna rotate you guys again. And we'll figure this out. Okay. Oh, wallpaper ruler. That's interesting. All right, you guys. Let's let's do it. Yeah, Patricia, the machine is backwards just because I have it. I had the camera flipped funny, um, just because I I can't access it very easily. All right, so you can see through, I mean, I have a white background, so you can see all my seams through it quite a bit, but I'm hoping once I have the batting in there, you won't see it as much. But I think we did it here, guys. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little maybe shy on the edge, but I think we got a finished block and I think it's awfully sweet. Let me just um, measure. Here's my mom's six and a half inch mark. Oh, we're, we're good. We have a little extra on top, so we're not too small. I think we're actually in a really good, good size range. So there we are, um, squished down all those seams. We have another block done. Even after we, and we've averted, we've averted disaster too. So, all right guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we will call it an evening. <laughs> Hello again. So back at my mom's, in my mom's sewing room. So here we are, little tulip. I think it can go either way, I suppose. There we go. But cute, yes, I wanted like a, a little yellow tulip and I think it turned out so sweet. So this is a great example of like a, a neat pieced block. Uh, you know, we didn't use applique, we didn't use paper piecing, just straight, uh, straight sewing, <laughs> you know what I mean? Measuring pieces and sewing them together. So that's awesome, I love it. There we go, guys. All right, so have a fabulous weekend and vacation, you guys. I won't be here on on Monday because it's a holiday. So, um, but I will be back at our normal location and normal place on Tuesday at, um, at 8.30 PM central time. Mary, you, you would have had a recut. Yeah. You know what? I might've other, a different time recut that piece, but I just know that in the bigger scheme of the splendid sampler, no one's ever going to know that. And I think if I did find that again, it'd be kind of a fun story. Like, oh yeah, that's the time when I measured wrong. <laughs> so, you know, from far away, you can't, you can't see it anymore. You know, uh, that little mistake. So that's okay. Ooh, I will for sure have a caramel apple for you, Gretchen. <laughs> if we do have a caramel apple, I'll take a photo and I'll, and I'll post it. Uh, under the Facebook page. So awesome guys. I will get this up on YouTube probably when I get back on Tuesday. So it won't be up right away, uh, but I will get it up. So thanks. Have a great evening. Have a great weekend. Have a great holiday. See you guys later. Good night.